After a stormy night, here's exactly what happened to the Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins number 2 QB Jacoby Brissett is ready to compete for a starting position. Players of the Miami Dolphins turned down voluntary training workouts during the offseason 2021. The Miami Dolphins 2021 draft trend in round 1 make fans be confused. Defenders prospects at draft 2021 who Dolphins should consider. Thanks for support NatFL, subscribe please. Miami Dolphins number 2 QB Jacoby Brissett is ready to compete for a starting position. Jacoby Brissett has experienced everything in the NFL from starting to playing behind Tom Brady, Andrew Luck and Philip Rivers. Brissett is already preparing for life after football, though he's not done playing. The 28-year-old quarterback signed a $7.5 million, one-year deal with the Miami Dolphins last month. On Wednesday, Brissett became an investor in a venture capital fund co-founded by two-time Super Bowl champion Malcolm Jenkins. Several other NFL players, including Duran Harmon, Devin McCourty, Jason McCourty, Jordan Matthews and Rodney McLeod also have invested in Broad Street Ventures. I didn't want to be in a situation where I was broke when I was done, Brissett said on the AP Pro Football Podcast. Brissett reached out to Harmon and McCourty, former teammates in New England, for advice. I grew up where I would never see this amount of money I expect to know what to do with it. Brissett said, knowing that, I kind of leaned on Devin and Duran because I knew they obviously made more money than me. I could lean on them and say, hey, how did you navigate this? How do you go about this? While he looks toward the future, Brissett is excited about going home to play football and reuniting with Dolphins coach Brian Flores, who was an assistant coach for the Patriots in Brissett's rookie season. A native of West Palm Beach, Florida, Brissett is slated to be the backup to Tua Tungavailoa. He replaces Ryan Fitzpatrick, who started seven games for Miami last year. That was my deciding factor was the opportunity to compete no matter where I went, Brissett said. I have no expectations going in there. Just to go out there, compete, play my best, get better every day, hold myself to a starter caliber player in this league no matter the situation. I'm looking forward to the challenge, looking forward to the opportunity to grow, or to the opportunity to grow. Brissett started two games as a rookie after Jimmy Garoppolo was injured. Both QBs were filling in for Brady, who was suspended the first four games. He was 4-11 as a starter for the Indianapolis Colts in 2017 when Luck was injured. He went 7-8 in 2019 after Luck abruptly retired. Coming into the league and that's your first experience of what NFL football looks like, Brissett said about winning a Super Bowl with New England in 2016. Tom set a standard every day at practice along with a lot of other guys, and you saw how it all meshed together. For me to come into the league and that's my first experience as a young player, as a young quarterback, playing with the greatest quarterback of all time, it was a monumental experience in learning that I will never forget. Brissett had his best season two years ago playing for Colts coach Frank Reich and offensive coordinator Nick Sirianni, who is now Philadelphia's head coach. Brissett threw for 2,942 yards, 18 touchdowns, 6 interceptions and had a passer rating of 88. He also ran for 4 scores. He had high praise for Reich and Sirianni. When you talk to Nick and you start talking football, you kind of see his personality, Brissett said. Unbelievable dude. He knows football. He loves football. A guy that's going to be prepared for everything. One thing about Nick is he thinks of every situation possible. I think that will set him apart from a lot of these coaches because I'm sure he's going to call the plays there. I'm excited to see how it goes. We've always talked about him getting that opportunity to be a head coach. I think he's going to be one of the good ones in this league. Brissett expects Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts to have success under Sirianni. Hurts started four games as a rookie last season. The best thing about it is Nick is going to teach him, Brissett said. Nick is a great teacher. He understands players. He knows how to get how to get his information through to the players so that the player understands it. So I think that will be the best thing for Jalen and any quarterback that's playing with him. Players of the Miami Dolphins turned down voluntary training workouts during the offseason 2021. Dolphins players have become the 14th team to announce that at least some of their players will not participate in voluntary in-person offseason workouts. The Broncos, Seahawks, Browns, 
giants, patriots, lions, bears, raiders, bucks, jets, chargers, falcons and steelers are the others who have released similar statements through the NFLPA in recent days. Our team came together to discuss the current situation regarding COVID-19 and the lack of clear and timely protocols put into place by the NFL, Dolphins players said in a statement. The most significant fact from that discussion was the health and safety benefits of a fully virtual offseason. Last year, league-wide injury data showed players experienced a 23% reduction in missed time. For these reasons, the Miami Dolphins stand in solidarity with players across the league across the league who are making informed decisions to exercise their right to not attend voluntary in-person workouts this offseason. We will hold each other accountable in making sure every player is getting their work in. Fins up. The virtual portion of the offseason program begins Monday. The NFL announced Wednesday that Phase 3, the only phase that will consist of on-field work, will include 10 on-field voluntary in-person practices and a three-day mandatory minicamp that will run from May 24 to June. The Miami Dolphins' 2021 draft trend in Round 1 make fans be confused. There are seemingly dozens of projections for the 2021 NFL draft on a daily basis, we've reached that point in the offseason where we've run out of information to gather and all that is left to do now is wait and overanalyze the events of the end of the month. And for some, all of those mock draft projections are a dream come true. Maybe not for you, Dolphins fans. But for people like Benjamin Robinson, aka, grinding the mocks, an intense influx of mock drafts as a dream come true. Robinson collects mock draft data from far and wide, from experts to media, and everything in between. And when Robinson is finished with all of those projections, his data can tell quite the interesting story. What does it suggest awaits the Miami Dolphins in the first round of this month's draft? According to Robinson's data, 41.3% of media mocks over the course of the, mocks over the course of the last two months, March and April have the Dolphins drafting a wide receiver in the first round. Given that Miami has not taken a single wide receiver in the NFL draft over the last two seasons, that tells you all you need to know about the position. But everything else feels up for debate. Linebacker and defensive end are split nearly 50-50 to -50 in the first round projections, as are the candidates. Kwati Pei of Michigan Aziz Ojolari of Georgia and Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa of Notre Dame have all been mocked to the Dolphins nearly the same amount of times. And that doesn't even touch the chances of Penn State's Micah Parsons or Tulsa's Zavin Collins. How indicative is Robinson's data collection of the actual results? Media mock drafts in March and April last season pegged both Tua Tungavailoa and Austin Jackson among the five most commonly mocked targets to the Dolphins and that was before Miami drafted both in the top 20 selections. One thing it didn't One thing it didn't see coming? Miami's selection of Noah Igbenogany in the first round of last year's draft. Cornerback was not among the five most commonly mocked positions to the Dolphins in the first round. If the data follows the same trend for Miami again, the Dolphins can brace for one of either Jamar Chase or Devonta Smith and then likely either Ojolari or Pay at number 18 overall. There's still time for that to change and perhaps Robinson's data won't be so indicative of the results this time around regardless. But this is worth monitoring no Defenders prospects at draft 2021 who Dolphins should consider. For the second straight season, NFL teams put defenses with six defensive backs, dime defenses, more often than they did with four defensive backs, base defense. Nickel defenses, those defenses with five defensive backs, have become the new base defense, and that's a trend that's increased and advanced for years. But it's not just nickel, at this point, the standard base defense has found itself trailing in the schematic race. In 2019, per Sports Info Solutions, defenses played more dime, 20.9%, than base, 18%. Which means that defenses are putting 6 dBs on the field more than they're putting 4. And the same was true in 2020. Including the postseason, NFL teams played base defense on 3,063 snaps, which represented 19.5% of the league's 18,934 total dropback. Teams put four defensive backs on the field just 3,063 times, or 16.2% of the time. 
Nickel was once again the new base, with 11,813 snaps against the pass, representing 62.4%. With that in mind, it's not surprising that the 2021 draft class has a high number of defensive backs who have excelled in multiple positions, everything from the slot to the box to the defensive line to outside cornerback and free safety. Because in today's NCAA and NFL, the more you can do, the better your chances are of seeing the field sooner than later. Here are number one prospects with specific leanings to the NFL's current multiplicity paradigm. Who is the most suitable with Miami Dolphins at 36th pick or deeper? Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa, Notre Dame. Owusu Koromoa is the most prominent multi position defender in this class, and he could be this year's Isaiah Simmons, which means that he brings attributes to the table, and also that his NFL coaches will have to know what to do with him. It took the Cardinals a few minutes to figure that out with Simmons after selecting him eighth overall in the 2020 draft. Owusu Koromoa projects as an early to mid first rounder, so the pressure to make the most of his athletic gifts will be similar. At 6 foot 1 and 221 pounds, Owusu Koromoa could be called a linebacker, though many who have studied his tape think of him more as a safety. He's also dangerous in the slot. Last season, he gave up just 14 catches on 25 slot targets for 152 yards, 101 yards after the catch, one touchdown, one interception and an opponent passer rating of 70.8. Overall, Owusu Koromoa had 331 snaps in the slot in 2020, 212 in the box, 88 along the defensive line, and 14 at outside corner, usage patterns that were pretty closely mirrored in 2019. 2019. So, it's clear that he's a versatile guy. The question becomes whether his NFL team will succumb to the piano in the room dilemma and struggle to know where to put him.